We have people who take care of that. 608. 608. Um, my name is Kimberly Hunter. I am not only a community in Woodfin, member of Woodfin, but I am the vice chair of this committee. And so the first um, matter of business is we want to approve the agenda. And so does anyone here want to? I move, I move the approval of the agenda. Thank you. Did you Date. Yeah, let's change. Oh, that we, yeah. Do I say it? We've made a decision to change the order of the agenda to do the Robin Hood question first. <laughs> second that. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. All right. We have a motion and a second, and we can have discussion. No discussion. Are you intending to legislature for the budget? Sure. Are you intending to go ahead and take up the Robin Hood uh, ministerial review out of order that's here, or in what in what order are you going to approve your agenda? The motion is to okay to approve the agenda by moving the question of, of uh, Robin Hood to um, this is I gave him my agenda. <clears throat> we, we will move the a ministerial review question to um, to be first, and the uh, unfinished business legislative public hearing second. Is that specific enough? After the public comment period. Uh, oh yes, after the public comment period. And did you want to discuss moving forward with the review? Is that next on your, in your thinking? Or are you ready to just move into public comment and then do the review? So, I know you have all been made aware that there is a, an appeal that's been filed pending before the Board of Adjustment um, by a, a neighborhood group that um, purports to have standing to, to appeal. The, the appeal concerns whether or not, it includes uh, whether or not um, review by the, the board, this board, the planning board, is appropriate as the next step for their approval. And whether a ministerial review, which, to briefly talk about that, ministerial review is essentially, uh, it's not discretionary in nature, it's a, um, you basically are a functionary. You figure out whether an ordinance is, the elements are met, if boxes are all checked in terms of the ordinance, then you move on to approval. It's not discretionary and in the sense of, I know we have lots of folks that are signed up here to speak to that agenda item. Um, it's not a public hearing. Yeah. It's, and that's not required by uh, your, the town's ordinances. It's not required by law that for you to have a, a public hearing on that. In fact, you, you cannot take a public comment as whether or not you approve a ministerial decision. So if that makes sense, it's, are all of the elements of our ordinance checked? And if they are, then then you move forward with approval. It's not what does the whole community think about whether we ought to do this or not. Does that make um, sense? Yeah, so, so what I'm hearing you say, and do you mind if I introduce you or you introduce yourselves okay. to the... <laughs> you should use the mic sometimes. I mean, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so I'm, I'm John Henning, I'm the town's attorney. Um, so as I was clarifying, we are here on the question of Robin Hood uh, road development. It is a ministerial review of whether or not the elements of the ordinance have been met. It's, uh, you're, you are not required uh, by law to have a public hearing on it. And in fact, a ministerial review cannot by law be driven by anything but is the ordinance met? Does it check all of these boxes? So if that if that makes sense. It does. Now your motion is to have uh, that matter come up after public comment. You can do that, I'm, but I'm going to admonish you all that your that public comment cannot be determinative of whether or not a um, a ministerial review is met or not. It's not it's not even to be a factor. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, the tendency of the appeal on whether or not this is the proper venue for for that or whether ministerial review is even appropriate please is is a you you're aware of that it's it's a fact it has been filed in the board of adjustment which hears quasi-judicial appeals of of determinations that determination being uh 
Shannon is, as then zoning officials determination that this is the right venue for a minister and it's a ministerial review in nature of, of that application. Um, you have the option to continue the hearing on that matter for a reasonable amount of time. Um, we would have to carefully consider how long that is going to be if that ends up being your desire. Um, or you can move ahead with that, again, entirely ministerial review after your public comment period. But again, I'm emphasizing for you that that public comment period can't be what sways your determination about whether or not the ordinance is met. I have a question. If this group has standing on the appeal, can, can an appeal be granted by us? No. No. This, this board does not hear appeals under the zoning ordinance. The Board of Adjustment does that. And that's per state law as well. Okay, so that's where it's at at this point. It's still on appeal with it's, the Board of Adjustment? It's on an appeal. It's sort of two different tracks to an extent. Okay. It's on an appeal to the Board of Adjustment for the determination. There's not any easy way to resolve under our statutes what happens when you've got this track, which we went down because of uh, the determination by your zoning officials that it's a ministerial review and should be come before you all for, for that determination from and to tease that apart from the appeal before the Board of Adjustment and it's the only body that can hear that. Um, I think that there are um, other potential ways for um, an appellant in that situation to, to go get relief from a court to get enjoin, injunctive relief and and to, to put a you know to, to invalidate what you have done here tonight but the one question before you and I'm, I'm happy to try to help you resolve it is if it was to be invalidated, have you all wasted everybody's time here tonight to do that? It's a pending question. I don't know the answer to it. So, um, so if I could just try to simplify that a little bit. You, you basically have two options before you, I think, is what John is saying. And John, correct me if I'm wrong. You can, you can move forward and hear this item tonight and make a decision to approve or deny um, based on the technical standards that the town has. Or you could choose to delay consideration um, to allow time for this appeal to be heard. Okay, um, okay. And we would recommend that you maybe pick a date certain, so pick a date in the future and some reasonable amount of time to allow the appeal to be heard. And we know that you know if it's heard, then we have time to come back to the planning board should that decision be that this is the proper body to review that application. Does that make sense? Yes. But we need to allow public comment to go before we? No. I would, I would recommend that you make a decision about moving forward or not before we move into public comment. So I'm going to, let's discuss. Um, do you, can we just go down and see who has questions or has a preference on how to do this? Well, I would prefer to make a motion to allow the appeal to continue and set the time frame for doing that. Okay. Yeah, Ms. Ms. Chairman, uh, I may butt in, <laughs> pardon me, I'm Robert Carpenter, the attorney for the developer. If there's gonna be one. So now, now. <laughs> Order. You, know, you can comment, we all can comment. But there's a time and a place. Order, please. There's a time and a place for comments. If we're going to get through this evening in a reasonable manner, so everybody needs to cooperate, there is a time and a place for comment. You cannot just speak at a turn, so please. So I'm going to ask you to hold your comment because we're discussing here. This It's not yet a place to hear from you. I appreciate that you want to speak, but give us the proper opportunity with everyone in the room to do it in a matter that's in conjunction with the law. So. Do you want to? Madam Chair, at the risk of um, contradicting you, I don't think it's inappropriate for the board considering this your applicant. And in a, in a ministerial review, you, you can hear from your applicant about the process. I do have to caution all parties that the appeal is the appeal, and it's not before this board. It can't be. So the, the nature of it and the, the uh, merits of it can't be discussed. Um, but to hear briefly from, from them about um, 
the process that brings us to ministerial review, again, avoiding the, the matters on appeal to the, the Board of Adjustment is not inappropriate if the board deems to do so. Right, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I think what I'm wanting to do out of equity is to hear and discuss openly and then from that discussion determine a next step that is collective to the planning committee and not be interrupted in that process. Yes, that's the will of the board. Thank you. I already stated mine. Yes. <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, will you remind me what the me too is? <laughs> To, to set a finite date uh, for the appeal um, and delay here for the um, for our uh, review, yeah, I don't think yeah. we're supposed to mention appeal. In we the have no jurisdiction or any kind of um, oversight of the appeal process. So that is not what we are here to review or discuss. We're here to determine if our portion of ministerial review will be today or at a future date. Right. Is that what I understand you to say, sir? Uh, it is in the discretion of the board to continue the that particular matter and um, as Ms. Tuck says I think by date certain is far preferable to you know uh, an indefinite delay um, I, and procedurally you have a pending motion that needs to yep, be we do. <laughs> um, revised and seconded again before you would have a vote on it yep okay so but that was to answer the question of if we were going to review as part of the agenda. And so as a part of this discussion, we've determined we do not want to review as a part of this agenda. So back to you, committee person. <laughs> yeah, but I need clarification. I'm not supposed to refer to appeal, the appeal motion no the, that is a part of what we're the thinking. appeal is a fact if the appeal is before uh, the Board of Adjustment um, you couldn't go into the merits of it because it's not properly before this board okay you could and you can't affect but, but anything to, what, to what do I'm really doing is moving the ministerial review for yes it. yes uh, okay I, I move that the ministerial review that is before us be um, um, postponed until continue. continue do i have to set a date so have we it would be preferable so the next planning board meetings we have december 6th january 3rd february 7th those are the, the dates so depending on how and i can time. go out as far as i want well <laughs> okay uh is february 3rd a reasonable Seven. Okay, that would be postponed till February seventh. Does the applicant get a, a, a say in this, or is this something that we're not allowed? This is not. We object to this brief procedure. But we're doing that. Thank you, Linda. Uh, that's the objection of the developer. You're welcome to not hear it or hear. Did we get a second? To the no, we did. I'll second. So we have a motion and a second. Um, any any more discussion okay so I feel like we've just stacked two things we've we haven't closed out the uh, approval of the minutes because we're moving things around so in terms of making the motion which order am I am I combining the motion of the okay okay so first we're going to remove or post uh would you say what's the word you use continue, continue. 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 That's right. continue. Con okay so all in favor of continuing the ministerial review of the robin hood development till february 7th please say aye aye aye, aye. all opposed zero mm -hmm. the motion passes and then now um those <laughs> who um agree to approve the minutes as revised by member Overbeck. Please state so by saying aye. Uh, aye. Because we have to approve the minutes. Okay. Did you have a motion? Did you take a motion to approve? A motion to approve, yes, and they're approving, yeah. So agenda as amended is approved. And the minutes. Now I have to approve the minutes. I haven't done that yet of last time. No. 
Oh, the agenda. <laughs> Meant it for the agenda. Um, Thanks. Yeah. The agenda. Do we want to pause and let people that want to leave leave now? I just. Mm -mm. Yeah, so great. Now <laughs> we want to approve the September minutes. Did every member have a chance to review? Any modifications or changes? Okay, a motion. Do we have a approval of the minutes from uh, October fourth of the of the planning board? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Do you do you want to give the public an opportunity to leave yeah. if they would like to? A recess. Okay. Um, being advised to offer a five-minute recess for anyone who wants to adjust, move, shift, and will reconvene in five minutes. What time is it now? Okay. Thanks. Hey. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> I, just, I don't. Um, <coughs> I, I used to do Robert's rules and all that, you know, all, you know, but I don't do well with two or more people talking at me at once. <laughs> yeah. No, you did good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I think he's going to have a tough time with that attorney. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, if we technically have commissions and committees and such, we don't. We don't have to listen to anybody shouting So I don't want to do that. I can just kind of keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Or in, could persuade the community. And that's not what this board is about. So, in this particular matter, you have a fan club out there, Glenda. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I made the motion. Yeah, I have a question. Developer and developer. Too many people. Let's see what this is. You just never know. You never know. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I just think um, the truth of the matter is public comment is very important and I, I really personally dislike when they um, shut it down. Yeah, and I'm probably not going to do that, so I wanted to talk to you too since you're the one that I figured as much. Yeah. They want me to get the time. Yeah, well, I guess you probably can't talk like, about it. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm just having fun. I thought they had three minutes each. No, but they wanted to get the last three minutes on there to get like an hour or two. And that's the thing that really angers people. Why didn't they see that? Yeah. We're not actually doing it. I'm not doing it. All right. The puzzle is that they, that the people are actually coming. So, they're going to be the issue. 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 I'm getting. 
Well, I, I don't know. If you want to read about it, I just think <laughs> my husband discovered an article in the which is a newspaper I read, really, but it's October 18th. Um, but Forbes, I think, is the author. I think he and his wife might run away from It takes a whole thing about it. STRs in this area. And, and I mean, it's it's very, I mean, they're very forthright. You know, they say they don't mean to it, but it's, 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 it's very good. Yes. So, yeah, actually, they don't even talk to them with the person. But um, the map shows that. I don't know, I mean, a lot of them spoke last month. They just don't I guess so. A lot of people have signed up for it. And, um, and there's some good articles out there on board the Classic, which is what I know. Um, so, based on your email, yeah. if we want to, I, I, I couldn't, it was too late for me to change my staff report and presentation, so you'll have to. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm have prepared to, to do that. Time. The only thing I want to just actually add, though, in addition to that Here? thing about the you know, you have so many on the Enforcement are totally different. Do you ever read The Blade? Okay, October 18th, they've written a huge article on SDR. You should read it, especially because it's about Asheville more than they don't mention with them. But, um, and, and the quotes are a whole lot of different sources. But, um, enforcement is one of the things that I'm not disagreeing. Okay, but you need to, you need to send a message to the commission. Okay, uh, but should it be a part of the order? Or should it be a part of the I think it's not. Um, it's like, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's broader. It's broader. It's more about like and that keep us. Exactly. And if yeah. you don't know, what it had to say is whatever. Yes. I just feel it's the message is really strong about that. Yeah, yeah. It's really make that part of your recommendation. Okay. Your advisory. So you can make any other recommendation. Okay. Are you going to have somebody time? Yeah. Who wants to be the timer for public comments? Anybody volunteer? It's going to be hard to over. Yeah. Will you do that? Three minutes per person. Uh, We're about to go into public comment. Three minutes max. Uh, yeah, will you be the timer? Want to the overall public comment? Yeah, so we're thinking, well, um, public comments will be STR comments. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have anything you want to say before I. Okay. Okay, I'm calling the meeting. We are resuming the meeting um, and calling it back to order. The next item on the agenda is public comment. And how, for those of you who are not familiar with public comment, this particular section is just about anything you want to comment on. We'd like you to hold your comments about STR because that's another section. So I will open it up, state the time that we're opening it. Each person speaking gets a maximum of three minutes. Um, our desire is that you be as concise as possible, but we will ask you to stop at the three minute timer. Um, we're excited you're here, happy you're showing up to be a part of this. So I wanted to shift the mood a little in the room. No, I'm not going to play mu mood music. But I do want to say <laughs> that we are excited that you're here. And please keep this as, as diplomatic as you can with your passions intact. We understand everyone has passions. Everyone has an interest. We care about your interests and your passions. We just want to be concise and be sure that we don't cause um, undue harm in any way. So, I will open up public comment. Uh, the time is, multitasking is not my thing, 6.32 p.m. And the first person I'm going to call up, you've got to come up based on the order I call you, please, is Ariel Haas. And please keep your comments to three minutes or less. This is the one exception to STR comment. Where do you want me? And please state your name. Hi, my name is Ariel Haas. Thanks for hearing me. I got to run off to, uh, to soccer pickup for two kids, so I appreciate it. Um, 
I myself am a high school science teacher and I have four kids under 14. So when I travel, it's not even possible for me to stay in a hotel room unless I'm buying some extravagant suite. So my only option really is STRs. And I think this is fairly common. So if you were to choose to ban STRs, tourists are just going to stay in nearby cities, Black Mountain, Swannanoa, who knows what, and they're going to spend their money there. And that's one of my concerns, that you're going to hurt small businesses as part of the process, like Moe's or Baked Pie Company. People are not coming from Black Mountain to go to Moe's, unfortunately. To go to Moe's, you're going to stay or live in Woodfin, um, generally. So um, we don't want those businesses to close or to be hurt in part. We're potentially talking millions of dollars, and tourism is the number one driver of this economy um, in the entire area. I myself, as a science guy, like to rely on data. So some quick data as opposed to conjecture. If you compare Asheville city limits and their, as their housing prices, which has banned STRs, essentially, effectively, Asheville's third quarter of 21 compared to third quarter 22, there was a price increase of 12%. If you compare that to Woodfin, which allows STRs, the same time frame, there was a price increase of 3.5%. So the area that has banned STRs did not see a reduction in price because of more availability. It's, they don't correspond. It's simply a, a lack of supply. Overall, in all of Buncombe County, only 3% of homes are um, STRs. So we're not talking a large chunk of the, of the home, um, of the number of homes, essentially. Consider also that people that own STRs upkeep their homes significantly better uh, with curb appeal, and that better condition is better for the environment as a whole. Um, what I do propose is I, I think there is some importance in regulation or knowing where and who has STRs as best as possible. And I think every homeowner should, that, uh, that rents them should be required to include noise, um, noise devices, like noise-aware devices. There's a couple companies that do it that can monitor if it's too noisy. And you can find homeowners who have unruly guests, and they're going to ensure that those guests are kept under control. I think that's important as well. What we need to do is build more affordable housing. We don't want to cut off tourism and shut down numerous small businesses as a result. We need to look at the data to guide us, and we need to think about places like Moe's, for example, before we make decisions that could hurt them. Thank you. Thank you for letting me go over here. Okay. Timer. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we've got a timer. Thank you. So the next person or persons, if you choose to come together, Kenneth Westall, Sharon Westall. Uh, we're saving our time back. We don't need to speak. Back. Oh, thank you. How about Richard Labrie? Miss. Okay. Moving on. John Moore. Oh, we saw a wave. I didn't put my name down, and I'm happy to let y'all have that time back. Oh, thank you. Jessica, can we turn the light on? I don't know if anybody has a sight challenge. <laughs> Thank you. It helps with the handwriting. Jessica Bernstein. <laughs> okay. Deborah Nankin. Okay. Brett Killian. Okay. Alex Bernstein. Or Bernstein. Uh, anybody, I, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, please know that I apologize ahead of time. Um, Corey Fridge. When you get to the dais, please state your name. Hello, my name is Corey Fridge. Um, I was originally going to say something else, but um, I just wanted to speak to the importance of being um, polite to your neighbors and you know learning the importance of standing in line and waiting your turn I don't know someone who's a professional should definitely know that that's all I want to say Mike Maloney yes I was at the last meeting and I spoke regarding uh, I have a house on 29 Woodfin uh, I called uh, regarding the sidewalk not having a sidewalk we just built a beautiful park and uh, we got kids coming down with families I almost saw a kid hit by a car coming down 29 Woodfin 
going to our park that we built, that beautiful park. Uh, I was told at the last meeting that it's a DOT problem, and I talked to DOT, and they said the liability is on Woodfin because of the Woodfin Park. I'm, at, I'm happy that the attorney here is to speak on that. If a child gets hit or killed on this, who do we, uh, what do we do? Sir, my client is the town, God advise the Okay, town. yeah. So this is a bad situation. I, uh, you said you, uh, before um, Shannon said, it's a DOT thing, but DOT is pushing it on to us as Woodfin owners. A uh, lot of families, a lot of kids, no speed bumps, no nothing. People are flying down there, and I saw very close, close calls where kids could get killed down there because those cars go down there at 50 miles per hour. Please address this. It's on record that I spoke about this, that if anybody gets injured on there, down, going down that road without a sidewalk to our park, the Woodfin Park there on the river, Please state your name. Michael Maloney. I'm Thank sorry. you. Bo Carpenter. Oh, I was going to call you anyway. It's Kismet. <laughs> I just didn't know your name. Uh, my official name is Robert, but apparently the book, my nickname is Bo. Um, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I, I'm up here to encourage uh, the board to change the decision made a few minutes ago. Uh, the motion to continue. Um, this. My clients filed a permit, application permit, in May 2021. They've been jumping through hoops since then with the town. We've been trying to get on the planning board to dinner for months and months and months. We were promised to be on tonight. There's a, a, a motion to continue filed today by a group that has no standing at all. Um, continuing from today, prejudices our client, my client, greatly costing it thousands and thousands of dollars. This board has no authority, legal authority, to stay this matter, to stay this matter pending the board judgment decision. State law is very clear that only the board of adjustment has the right to stay a matter. And you did not let us have a say in all in your motion to continue. That violates these constitutional rights of my client. You're giving us no choice but to go to court now to seek an overturning of your decision to continue it. Since you did not have authority to make the decision you made tonight, we would be obligated to, we would be entitled to our attorney's fees from going there under NCGEN stat 6 uh, 6.21-7. I believe you made a mistake tonight. It's not <coughs> too late to reverse that mistake. You can change your mind, hear this tonight, like it's been scheduled for a very long time, we didn't know about any inkling of continuance till today. Till today. We've not seen this motion to continue. You guys don't even give a basis for it in your, in your discussion. No basis at all. We deserve some basis for your decision tonight. If you don't reverse it, we have no choice but to go to court. We don't want to do that. We don't want to go to court. We want to work. We've worked closely with Ms. Tupp. We've worked closely with Mr. Henney to get to this point. We've been going through this process for a long time. For you to continue it without hearing from us is order, order, order. Please don't let's let's have kindness. Let's not interrupt each other. And we want to be kind. We came in here to have an administrator review, which is appropriate, as Mr. Henning said. It's not discretionary. There's no reason to continue it. You don't have discretion any way. The staff who's worked really hard on this has recommended that the planning board approve this. All your, jo your job today is to check that box. If it has to be stayed, that's a board adjustment decision, not a planning board decision. You have no authority to do that. I wish you'd give me an opportunity to say these things after the decision had already been made, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So I, I would encourage the board to tonight to, to revisit the motion made earlier and let's hear this administrative matter so we can take the planning board out of this process okay. and we can go to the Board of Adjustment where the dispute is. They raise a dispute before the Board of Adjustment. That's the forum, not the planning board. So this is what I was going to say it's when I got time. up. Um, please it's reconsider. time. And, and I did hear you. Thank you. We heard you. Josh Portney. Okay. Thank you. John Barnard or Bernard? Okay. <coughs> Alan Mice? I'd like to speak.
Please wait till you're at the dais and then please state your name. Alan Meese, I live in Asheville, right at the bottom of where this development would be. Pardon me. I guess that. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> as I drove into Woodfin tonight, <clears throat> it says Woodfin, where community matters. Our houses are right under this development. Last year, I spent $7,000 to build a trench to be able to remove water, rainwater, coming down the mountain from my back neighbors around the front of my house. This will only get worse after they clear cut the top of a mountain. <clears throat> I happened to have dinner last week with a gentleman that was hired <clears throat> by Buncombe County <clears throat> to help Asheville with affordable housing. He's working on a project right down by the bus station. If all goes well, it'll be a huge project and it will complement the city. It'll look good. It'll be close to restaurants, medical, <coughs> grocery stores, transportation. The top of the mountain isn't close to anything. This is a financial matter that somebody bought a piece of property at the right price and wants to do nothing but profit by it. There's a lot of property on flat space around Woodfin and going out that if they were so interested in being part of the community, they'd go buy some property and build affordable housing on flatland. So can you address the committee, please? My three minutes up? No, but just address us. Okay, I'm sorry. Some of us decided to spend our lives here and retire here. This project will destabilize thousands of people's homes in Asheville, not Woodfin, in Asheville. And I think that you need to drive around, especially on a rainy day, and see the water that comes off that mountain down Beaverbrook, down Brookwood, all the way out over the golf course. The mountain can't handle it. Already, I can't get a certain type of insurance because this is a mudslide area by definition and you're only going to make it worse. So my thought to you is if community really matters, don't just take Woodfin into account. Drive totally through Asheville and see everyone this is going to affect. Thank you. Susan Hassel. Okay. Uh, Joe Kisson. Good evening. My name is Joe Kisson. Um, you know, I've heard talk from lawyers tonight. You have a lawyer here. The lawyer has advised the board what they can do and threat from other lawyers that have a financial interest should not dictate what this board does. And I understand what we've been told about ministerial and box checking and things like that. These are people's lives. This is their livelihood. This is their lifeblood. They've committed not just to build homes but to build communities. And people are telling us it's come down to checking boxes. The people of this community need to know when this is going to be discussed, when these folks are going to be heard, when they're going to have an opportunity to protect their own rights. The obligation of any government, I don't care if it's in Washington or a town like Woodfin, is to protect the interests of the citizenry. That's why you exist. And these people have to be given a forum where they can talk because we have out-of-town developers, developers who are interested in profits who are about to drop a nuclear bomb in a park-like setting, which is a community. And it's not going to just devastate people financially. It's going to devastate ways of life. It is going to devastate the environment. And this is supposed to be a community that prides itself on the protection of the environment. 
we're about to leave an unparalleled scar upon the land of this community to profit a few people who don't live here. The insanity of it really cannot be overstated. So I would encourage you as a board to reach out and don't be afraid of lawyers. There are going to be enough lawyers involved in this thing to start a Philadelphia law firm. Don't let that scare you, okay? Look to the region. Look to the city of Asheville. Look to the regional people that can help you. Look to the state level people that can help you. Look to the national people in the EPA that can help you. Because we don't just have an obligation here as a community. We have an obligation to the environment, to the animals, to the fauna. And this is going to be a disaster. And I'm told that they're building underground aquifers to hold the water in place. I turn on the television set every week and there's a biblical flood somewhere. And when that biblical flood happens here, this community is going to slide down into Beaver Lake. And no one seems to be concerned about that. We're concerned only about box checking and about things such as that. So I know it's a ministerial act, but I would encourage you to communicate to the community so that our voices can be heard. No one's out to go after these people behind me. No one wants to shout at them. No one wants to make them feel uncomfortable. But you can't come into a room like this with both hands in other people's pockets and say, gee whiz, we checked all the boxes. It's not acceptable. It's not right. And the people of this community need a forum when they can speak out and tell people what that's going to do to family, communities, and the people that have spent it's their time. money building a park-like setting. And there's a reason. I know I'm it's, not It's time. These roads are named Robin Hood Road and Beaver Road for a reason. And people should drive up there and see what it looks like. Lisa Lafave. Good evening. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Will you state your name? Lisa Lafave. You're close. Um, I'm the president of the POA at Reynolds Mountain community just above, and the proposed development would be to the east side of the mountain. For those familiar, the mountain splits into two areas, and this is up just south and east of the water tower at the top of the mountain. But the reason I'm here and I had an opportunity to share some comments with this planning board, and I know you have a tough job, so thank you for your service. But the comments I would share with you are really reflective of what we're dealing with as a community. So I happen to live at the top of the mountain, and in my role as president working with other homeowners who are volunteering, we are seeing significant erosion problems in our community. The community was built about 15 years ago. And that erosion is happening because of stormwater, but also steep slope development. <laughs> Reynolds Mountain, like many communities in the area, was developed before the ordinances were passed. As I understand the application from the Robin Hood development, they received and their application is going to be honored before the steep slope ordinance. So when you look at the grade of Reynolds Mountain and particularly the development of Robin Hood as proposed, it's an average of 43% steep slope, 43%. So when I, when I, you know, and I'm learning a lot in this role dealing with various uh, municipalities as we tackle our challenges on the mountain. But we're already paying thousands of dollars as a POA to consultants, geotechnical engineers that are on our mountain right now, assessing the challenges we have because of how the original developer built some things, <laughs> steep cuts, steep roads, uh, drainage, where that water is flowing. Those are all going to be likely challenges that the, the neighbors above and below this new proposed development are going to be facing. So I realize there's a North Carolina statute and ministerial procedure and all of that, but there's also reality to development on a steep slope. And we're living it, and anyone who builds on a steep slope 
regardless of how well you've managed your infrastructure and community with water, you're going to have a lot of challenges. And these are going to be ongoing problems. So on behalf of our community, um, and we have neighbors directly impacted by this proposed development on the Altamont side, we just would ask that you consider all of the challenges and the significant expense in addition to the comments that have already been made regarding um, disruption, displacement, wildlife, uh, Beaver Dam Lake, all of those issues that are before us. Thank time. you for your time. Uh, forgive me, it's beautiful penmanship. I'm not sure I'm reading it correctly. Sarah Mitchell. My name's Sarah Mitchell. I'm going to cede my time to my husband. Okay. Will you state your name? Hi, I'm Bill Mitchell. Um, I won't need six minutes, trust me. <laughs> I would just like to commend you on your decision to continue tonight. Um, there's a lot of questions, as you can see by this uh, very passionate opposition to this development. Uh, and I think, I think it deserves maximum scrutiny from the town of Boardfin altogether. So uh, thank you for doing that. Um, whether or not we have legal standing, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. But I will say we have moral standing. This proposed development, if it goes in, is going to have a huge uh, negative impact on our neighborhood. It's going to impose a large burden. And there's a lot of issues with traffic, environmental issues, uh, emergency access that really need to be scrutinized. So I would encourage you to do so. Um, I would also urge you to please not succumb to bullying threats of legal action. Um, that, uh, uh, that is a tactic that, uh, in my mind, is reprehensible. Um, this should be able to be worked out without, uh, without doing that, without trying to in intimidate the town of Woodfin. Uh, finally, I would urge you all uh, to uh, drive five minutes from here and take a drive up Beaver Brook Road if you've never been up there. And I think you'll see very quickly for yourselves. And I also encourage the, the folks representing the developer from out of town to do this as well. Uh, you'll see very quickly why we are opposed to this project. Thank you. Brian Burton. Okay. And Nick Carpenter. Hello, board. My name is Nick Caparella. I live at 100 Dry Ridge Road. That property abuts this development. I have the 5.5 acres uh, that would be impacted greatly by this development. I applaud you for your decision tonight to push this off to February 7th. You did not make a mistake. You did the right thing. Many of these people know this issue a little better than I do. I'm a part-time resident. Here in Asheville. I purchased the home in 1982 and I love it there. I have 5.5 acres. I have a lot of bears. I have a lot of water. I can't imagine it getting any better. There won't be a fence that will keep hundreds if not thousands of people using my property as a hiking trail. We don't need the traffic. Thank you board for wanting to keep Woodfin a beautiful area. And like many others have said, I hope you take that strong responsibility, that very weighted responsibility, and hold it dear, because that's what you can do. Buy the piece of property back. It shouldn't be built on. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Thank you. My apologies for saying your name wrong. Okay. Is there any other public comment? Please step to the lectern and state your name. Hello. My name is Wendy Mach Ellis and I'm a resident of Lakeview Park and I live on the side of the lake where this development is being proposed. Lots of folks have already expressed lots of things and again thank you for pausing so that we can wrap our heads around this. 
This is much bigger than also all of the things that have already been mentioned. The entire access point to this property is through Asheville and through Lakeview Park and up through Sherwood. All the infrastructure, stoplights that are going to be needed, extra police and patrol, fire response, everything is coming from the city of Asheville. It's not Woodfin. The impact and the ramifications to this well-developed, beautiful neighborhood that we've all invested lots of time and money and resource to build community is under threat from this. Infrastructurally, it cannot support it. And I understand the ordinance was passed after they submitted their application, but they made major revisions to the scope of their project, and it needs to be re-examined and maybe pulled because it does not fit what, this, what the mountain can support. And I'm very concerned when it's so far past the staff checklist of boxes that have they looked at this with the right sets of eyes to check those boxes. Because the, the money that you might get from property tax or having them here in Woodfin isn't going to be worth it when you're dealing with lawsuits from all of us homeowners who are dealing with the impacts from this. Because you will have the opportunity to re-examine this at a different level. This was not appropriate. It should have never been approved to begin with. And now that the slope ordinance is in place, it needs to be re-examined. I think people would be more than happy to help reimburse the developer for whatever expense they're out so far to just stop this thing and go somewhere else. It, it can't be sustained. And we need to figure out how to work with the developers to move them somewhere else that's appropriate for the scale of 110 apartment buildings and 180 parking spaces? Are you kidding? It, it can't be sustained. And I'm very, very concerned as a homeowner. And we are going to be mobilizing every way possible to, to address this at every angle because it's, it affects not just Woodfin. It affects Asheville, the Asheville City Council, all of the infrastructure of Asheville as well. So thank you. Okay, so, oh, please, please, and state your name. Hi, my name is Amy Kelly. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for all your comments. I appreciate, um, I've had the opportunity to meet some of you, but I haven't met all of you, and I appreciate hearing from those I have not met. My name is, like I said, Amy Kelly. I'm a, the manager of Hatteras Sky. We're a company, we're a real estate development firm. Um, we have projects in many places, but the ones that we care the most about are in Asheville. Um, you've probably heard, I guess, people, I guess, have heard that we're from Atlanta. Um, it wouldn't be that way if we could help it. We would live here, but our families keep us in Atlanta. They've got um, soccer teams and schools and things like that, but we spend a lot of our time here. I'm actually a sustainable vegetable farmer. I have a vegetable farm in Etowah, North Carolina, and I consider this to be as much my home as Atlanta, but I appreciate that you all think we're outsiders, and we will do our best to earn a reputation of being insiders. Um, among our developments, I just wanted to highlight a few so that you know a little bit more about us, because I know sometimes when people don't communicate, maybe we all assume the worst, and maybe you'll assume the worst even after you've heard from me. But um, we've got two developments in Asheville. One is called The Radical. It's a historic um, rehabilitation of a beautiful historic building in the Rad. We are working with the local preservation society to maintain all of the beautiful elements of that building and bring it back to life. As many of you may know, it's been vacant for uh, decades and so we're activating that and um, also the Zelda Dearest which is in the South Slope neighborhood also a historic rehabilitation of three beautiful homes it's right next to Ukiah if you're familiar with that um, area one thing you may not know is that we purchased the land that's at issue here that we're talking about in 2018 we actually purchased 120 ish acres a hundred of it was conserved so when we talk about the environment and nature and the preservation of that some people here may not know understandably so that we actually conserved that forever just donated it to a um, an organization that oversees what's called a conservation easement on that property so i just wanted to highlight that i know there's lots of things that we could talk about in terms of what you would like to see and what we can do and that kind of thing but i just wanted to point out that some of the things that have been said are not technically accurate and maybe hopefully my explanation would enhance everyone's understanding about it so thank you for your time thank you okay all right 
I'm gonna close this public comment period. It is 7.03 p.m. And we're gonna move on to our unfinished item of unfinished business, which is legislative public hearings. So this is a request for text amendments to chapters 30 and 54 of the Town of Woodfin Code of Ordinances to update standards related to homestays and short-term rentals. We're going to take a five-minute recess. For those of you who want to exit, maybe talk outside of the building, and we'll resume in five minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. So I'm going to restate what I just stated, and then um, you'll go over the, the, the statute that states recusal, yes. and then that way you can leave. Is cool. that okay? Yeah, I'm, I'll probably stay. But okay, I'll but at least it's been recuse. stated, yeah. so then... Do I need to, do I need to leave? That's with the two of I can't vote. Right, recuse. Uh -huh. I'll, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll stay if it's okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. How long have you been with the town? Since June. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Are you? Were you with that firm here before? Yeah, I'm from this called Campbell Shatley. We're over on the Maryland. Um, they're a ranger to care. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah. In um, Russ's building. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Um, I know Russ really well. Yeah. Thank you. My wife is at uh, Robertson Stevens for a while. Oh, okay. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is, uh, I think, um, I think this goes yeah, with we, it. We yeah, this is the one I just said. Um, it says it's these. Yeah, we just about uh, yeah. said we said in the last we have something to do with just a better system in some way. I'm okay, thank you. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna hand this back to you so I don't get confused. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Civil Service Board. So, you know, I'm sure you are. I was saying, So, do you think we're going to get to Didn't tell you in an open meeting. I don't think you all are. No, I know. We are the well, hey, buddy, what you been up to? Nothing much. Living your best life? <laughs> Living the dream, which I should have dreamed bigger. I know. I know. <laughs> so, do you hunt? Do you go hunt? Do you go hunt? No, no. No hunting, so. I used to with my dad, but he can't, it's also he can't get in the mountains anymore. So. Or did, she, did it get moved and taken out of the desert? Well, it's a problem. We're kind of... It's Thank not. You. It's not removed. Yes. Yeah. It's still there. Uh, the and their rule is law, right? So yeah, they, no, or no, the right. board of commissioners changed that so they can. Oh, no, Shannon just got me water. I'm okay. I'm just cold, and which is fine. It's a quasi 
just want everyone to know that. Somebody has a legal uh, property interest, and that's a little bit about Mr. Carpenter's uh, property interest. If they have the right to do something, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
that's one definition, hotel, motel, and um, home occupation and lodging. We also are recommending that we reorganize sections 154-143 and 144. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on those two um, when I get further into my presentation. Um, and then 154, or excuse me, 54-144 is to create a new land use category called limited uses. So currently today, the town has permitted uses. These are uses that are allowed by right without any special standards. Um, and then we have special uses which have to go through a special application process and it does have some special standards that have to be met. But we're proposing to create a third category which is called limited uses. Um, this is a use that would be allowed by right but there would be some additional standards beyond the basic development requirements um, that that particular use would have to satisfy before you could get a permit or before it could be allowed. So this is a new use category. And then we propose to make homestays and short-term rentals a limited use and then add special requirements um, or special standards that they would have to satisfy. And then we also, uh, as another measure, is to enhance our enforcement um, actions. So to go through those one by one, this is just a snip from that table. A complete copy of that table was included in the packet and it's in the materials available online. It is a large spreadsheet as I described. You list all of the different land uses on the left hand side. The uh, different zoning districts run across the top. Don't let that, that gray band confuse you. This is just one snip of that larger table and that gray band is really the header that lists all the different um, zoning districts but the way the table is structured uh, it repeats itself at each page break so that's why you see it there at the bottom and you don't see it at the top is because I took a picture of a piece of it um, but that is how it is structured and you can see on the left um, homestay home occupation and hotels motels in inns um, that gets added and you can see the, we're actually, yes, that, those are added to the table and then you can see the L for a limited use, a P for a permitted use, and an S, which you see at that top row, but it's for an entirely different use, um, that's for that special use category. So we're not proposing to make any other changes to this table other than to consolidate it and add those, those new limited uses. The second item was to update and add definitions, um, beginning with homestay. Uh, this is largely the same definition. It's just sort of cleaned up. Um, the main difference uh, for homestay is that we clarify that it is a resident occupied. Uh, previously, it listed owner occupied. That's actually not allowed in North Carolina. So we can limit it to a resident occupied structure, but not an owner occupied structure. So that is the primary change besides um, just kind of clarifying some of the language. Uh, home occupation is actually not really the, the substance of this amendment. It got folded in because of some of the other changes we were making. The town does not, the town has special standards for home occupations, but it didn't define what a home occupation was. So we've just added that definition here just to kind of further clean up the town's ordinances. Lodging, um, it's just sort of a catch-all. If it's there are different forms of lodging which include homestay, short-term rentals, hotels, motels, inn. Um, short-term rental, um, the main difference there is that we are clarifying or adding uh, a condition or rather part of the definition is that a short-term rental is limited to three bedrooms. So if you're a very large home with five, six bedrooms, you would not be classified as a short-term rental. You wouldn't meet that definition. You'd be classified as a probably a hotel motel inn or some other form of lodging. And then lastly, hotel motels inns um, is a uh, just an, a, a modified uh, definition. We already had that defined. Um, and it just clarifies that it can be short or extended stay facilities. Um, but it's, it's again a little bit of a catch-all definition. Moving on to the uh, third and fourth recommend recommendations was to reorganize um, sections 143 and 144. 143 was just a kind of a generic title that just said uses allowed and it just said only those uses that are listed are permitted in th these zoning districts. So we're just 
cleaning that up a little bit to offer a little bit more information that the town designates zoning districts, that we identify those zoning districts on a map. That map is maintained by the town. So we're adding more information in there so people understand and they know what to expect. Um, and then again, we are putting that table that I mentioned, we're moving it out of the appendix and we're putting it in section 1 or 54-143. And then we're moving some of the general requirements for all districts from uh, 144, which is the subsequent district or section into 143 into this section. And then 144 is dedicated primarily to um, uh, the limited and special uses that I mentioned earlier. So this is largely a reorganization with the insertion of that limited uses piece. Um, the next item was to add limited use standards for homestays and short-term rentals. Um, this is just sort of a list of those requirements. So for homestays, we're proposing to issue permits. Um, we're going to limit homestays to just our residential districts. That's R7, R10, R21, R43, and Mountain Village. Um, if you're not in one of those districts, you are not a homestay. You're some other kind of use. Um, we are requiring off-street parking. We're limiting the number of permits. If you have a homestay, you only get one homestay. So um, you can't have multiple homestays. Uh, we require proof of, we would require proof of insurance, um, contact information. We are proposing to prohibit special events and to remove a requirement for that owner occupation. So that is actually something where makes, is actually less restrictive than what the town currently requires. Short-term rentals, uh, similar, we're limiting the zoning districts in which they're allowed to uh, community shopping and light industrial. Uh, we would require off-street parking, limit the number of permits, require proof of insurance, require that contact information. Again, prohibit special events. And then limit the number of units in a multifamily building or a uh, development community. So if it's a large subdivision, um, you know, we would only limit it, or it's a townhome development or something of that nature, we would limit it to no more than 10% of the units can be used as short-term rentals. Um, now, I should say here, too, that if you are a subdivision, uh, we have other application processes that people can follow. So if you can't meet these requirements, there's another application process um, that can be considered. It's called conditional zoning that would allow um, uh, interested parties to, to seek special approval. And then lastly, we're proposing to explore some enhanced enforcement. Um, looking at an escalation of fines, um, if you are found to be out of compliance, either you don't have a zoning permit for your use or uh, you're operating inconsistent with that permit, then you are potentially subject to a $50 a day fine, and that's every day that you remain out of compliance. Um, so with the second offense, we would bump that up, uh, and th these are not these amounts are not set in stone. We can um, discuss this and, and make different recommendations, but we were proposing the second offense to be $300 a day, the third offense $500 a day. And then after that third offense, um, you also lose your permit. We do feel that the proposed amendments, um, as recommended by staff, are consistent with the town's comprehensive plan and other goals. Um, these are the stated reasons that were included in the staff's recommendation and in the staff report. Um, and I would be happy to answer any questions. That concludes my introduction. Thank you. No, not yet. <laughs> Would you like to explain the thank you? Happy to, Madam Chair. Um, and I don't know if anybody can anybody hear me okay. okay. Um, Although can people online I don't hear? Know whether that it's, to be. it's a good idea to speak into the microphone. Okay. They should hear, but so Madam Chair and Board Members, um, there is a as you all know, one sixty D is the new statute, uh, new chapter of the uh, North Carolina General Statutes that governs land use, uh, all of zoning, and it's what creates um, uh, boards such as yourself, planning boards. 
Um, there's a, a provision in uh, in 160D now. It's it's pretty recent uh, stat enactment that says appointed boards now have, and it doesn't matter whether it's a quasi judicial matter or what. It applies to you the same as it would the board of adjustment. Um, the members cannot have a conflict of interest in uh, anything that comes before them, even if it's advisory like this is. Um, so I know with a couple of you, and the exact phrasing of the statute is, members of appointed boards shall not vote on any advisory or legislative decision regarding a development regulation adopted pursuant to this chapter where the outcome of the matter being considered is reasonably likely to have a direct, substantial, <coughs> and readily identifiable financial impact on the member. Um, a couple of you have uh, ownership interests in short-term rentals. I believe that you do, Mr. Duchant, and you do, Madam. I just have a permit. Oh, you have a permit. Uh, I, I think that that's close enough, and in, in the direction that we have in the statute is to steer clear of, of impropriety like that. So um, for those, uh, for, for consideration of this matter, I do recommend that two of you take no part in discussion or, or voting on it. Um, we will maintain a quorum of the meeting, and if at least two mem remaining members can vote, uh, so long, and I understand, Mr. Shet, you may need to leave, as long as we have the three of you here, including you, Madam Chair, uh, and the two remaining members able to vote, that's a, substan that's a sufficient quorum to, to vote on the matter and move it along. But we'll ask you both to recuse yourselves, and we'll enter in on your minutes that you are recusing from this matter. Yes, I'm recusing myself. Okay, but I still have to run this meeting. <laughs> um, and I apologize. I realize I've, I've glossed over one very important um, piece of the proposed ordinance amendment. If I could just take a moment to cover that as well. Sure. Um, before I do that, does the board need to vote on the recusal? It's not, they're not there isn't a, a general voting uh, statute that applies to a planning board, so there's not a clear prohibition against recusal uh, um, on other grounds. You know, they could choose not to vote on something if they chose to. So I don't think they have to have a vote to excuse anybody from voting, just as long as the minutes reflect they had a conflict and couldn't vote for that reason. Okay, great. So the item that I neglected to cover in my presentation um, is that we discussed in some detail in the last meeting uh, the concept of amortization. So amortization um, is the process of, of phasing out non-conforming land uses. So if we were to move forward with the um, ordinance as proposed, a number of existing short-term rentals would become non-conforming. And the proposed amendment does include a provision to phase those out over a period of five years. So after five years, once this ordinance were, if this ordinance were to be adopted, those uh, short-term rentals would, would need to cease in operation as lodging. They can certainly return, they can have a homestay or they can certainly return to long-term uh, long occupation. So I apologize, I did not include that in my presentation, but that is included in the draft ordinance. Okay, so I, um, I have a question. Is she allowed? Is she allowed? To yeah, that's why I'm <laughs> pausing. <laughs> I mean, my past experience is if you're recused, you, you typically... I, I think that it is... The, I know the statute doesn't actually go that far. It says shall not vote on, but I, I think it would be more appropriate to, to not participate in it at all uh, if you're recused from, from voting. Okay. Are there any other questions? Please, please do. So are we waiting on a public comment section before we discuss or? Well, at this point, I'm just asking if you have any questions that I could help clarify. Well, I, as you, I'm going to make some recommendations for changes, but I assume that's later, is it, or now? Yes. Yes, which? Later. Later, yes, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's my understanding that I can go to public comment now and then we can deliberate after. So the time is 727. Thank you for everyone's patience. And I now would like to open public comment or for this specific matter. Um, it, I'm going to read your name on the list. If you didn't happen to write your name, just I'll, we can add you at the end. 
And please remember to state your name and uh, keep it to three minutes. Okay, first up is Corey Fridge. Sorry, hello everybody, my name is Corey Fridge. <coughs> I just wanted to say uh, thank you for having us here to talk about this and lending your ear to this subject because it's rather important to a lot of us. Um, uh, I just want to, like, reading it, like, it seems very, like, understandable and, like, pretty permissive to people like us who already have a permit and who are, you know, only doing on our own residential land that we live on. Um, I just want to want, want to make sure that in all of this, like people like us are given a little bit of preference over people who are trying to like bring in like 12 different units that they're controlling from Florida and a land management, you know, like whatever. So um, I feel like I kind of, the email that I got was kind of alarmist and I don't know who sent it to us, but like, I feel like they may have had an agenda that like I will recognize as not my own. Um, <clears throat> it has been a massively beneficial thing for us to be able to uh, Airbnb the standing garage that we turned into a 400 square foot living space with, you know, kitchen and bedroom and all that. It has really helped us to, you know, save money for our kids college to, um, pay for groceries now that they're really expensive and it helps us pay our mortgage every month which is like huge because like I said, it makes it so that we can save money for other things. And you know, I know there's probably a lot of people here that, that feel the same way and have the same kind of experience that we have. We're very careful about the people that we select to come into our property because we have a seven year old daughter. And like, we don't allow loudness. We don't allow these kinds of things. We have off street parking. So a lot of this stuff doesn't even affect us. I just want to make sure that you guys remember Woodfin residents. I live right down the street. Like, we are the little guy. We're just trying to get by. This has allowed us as working middle class and like, I mean, I, I work, you know, on and off part time, like three jobs, you know, and my lady does too. So like, you know, we work hard and we get by, but this has made it so that we can like really uh, join the passive income or semi-passive income thing that is out of reach for a lot of people in our income bracket. So I just want to say, please remember us. I think you guys will. You guys seem fair. And uh, that's all I wanted to say. I feel back the rest of the time. Thank you. John Maltree. My name is John Maltree. Uh, We've been living here for about 20 years now. My family moved here in the 1700s, so I'm not a newcomer to the area. My purpose is I want to just share some documents with you guys, really so that we have, a, at least since I'm older than most of you, I, the historian, I guess, on some of these issues, where we've come about, where short-term rental came about a little bit. Uh, first of all, and I really understand where you're coming from, is from the economic standpoint, uh, which is not a history issue, but basically has to do with the fact that Tourists are going to come, no matter what we do. If we get rid of short-term rentals at the individual level, they will still come, and there'll be a demand. The demand's not going away. The demand will probably go to hotels. We might build a hotel here. That would be great, wouldn't it? So what happens, though, is the economic impact to the individual. The money that's revenue that comes into a hotel goes to a corporate. The money that comes into a short-term rental stays local. So there's an economic issue. In fact, some calculations have been done if you spend $200 in a short-term rental in Woodfin, 136 of that $200 will stay in Woodfin. We're at, and that's, I'm talking about hotel revenue, not the spending the tourists do outside. However, if they stay in a hotel chain, only $83 stay in Woodfin. So we can build another hotel here, but we'll lose 63% reduction in the impact to the community. So there's a real dollar, and you can calculate how much that would be. But a couple of pieces of paper I want to throw out here. One is that how this got started, the short-term rental and the guidance, this was in June 16th, 2005. Uh, the planning board had come up with some recommendation basically to make 
short-term rentals to follow under the hotel motel ordinance, which sounds like that's where we're headed now. This is the document that started that process. Then uh, on June 16th, when this was being proposed to the city council, the board of aldermen, there was an outcry just the Robin Hood area, and it consisted of that who else was here, they're taking pictures and everything. And there were a lot of people, I don't know if anybody remembers that, but that was back then. And this is the minutes which established the mayor's uh, strategic task force on short-term rentals. What this was about, and set the members there. The next document is we, we decided that what we would do at that meeting, it was so much contention for and against it. There was really passion about what we needed in short-term rentals. So we set up this task force. There was 12 members on the task force, and the mayor was on one of the, he was heading the task force, and we had various meetings to try to find it. It was equally divided, those who were for short-term rentals and those who were against it. And so we had these meetings, and I know at least, I got the last minutes, which was revision three of the short-term rental guidelines. So we went through that, and we talked about it, we debated it, how we should do it, what was best for the community, and we came up, and this is the document three that shows just the last meeting. Then we came up with the recommendations for the council, the Board of Aldermen, to look at. And here's the list of those items that was recommended. The next time one was, <laughs> oh, that's it already? Time. Oh, gee, then you're not going to. He can come back, maybe. I don't know. Is that allowed? <laughs> I mean, this is for your benefit, not mine as much as. I don't know know what I don't know what's allowed, but I mean someone's giving them their time. It, it's, I don't think it's in your rules of procedure. The council does that, but I don't think it's in the rules of procedure. I have clients that have procedural rules that say no seeing of time, I guess, but I don't, but there's no law that says you can't do it, and you don't have a rule one way or the other. So I think it's... Uh, so out of respect for the people in the room, if there's no rule, then I think will you remember where you left off sure and when i call your name sir you say oi and then you'll get back up <laughs> okay okay sorry <laughs> all right um brian fairy <coughs> furry i was gonna say that sorry. shucks thank you and i'm on the edge of my seat i want to know how that ends <laughs> anyway, uh, cliffhanger yeah, I'm Brian Free. Uh, I've spoken a couple of times. This is off the cuff. I don't know how much more I have to add other than, uh, you know, saying again, kind of reflecting what this gentleman said, it, I, we are the little guy. This is making a big difference in my bank account every month, making it work for me. Um, I'd hate to see it go. I really want to see that amortization thing go away because I did absolutely nothing wrong. I got my permit legally. I make sure that everybody around me is happy all the time. I work hard to do that. Um, to the board, um, I've heard very little from you guys as to why this is bad. I've heard some emotional complaints about this isn't the Woodfin I grew up in. I understand your complaint, but I don't see data behind that. Um, to your point, this isn't a neighborhood feel. Uh, you're right. Um, neighborhood feels are starting to disappear. I don't think short-term rentals are the villain in that. I think there's a lot of other factors, and I think that uh, to pin it all on this is misrepresentative. I would like to know uh, from the board if you could release anything that would allow us to understand why this decision is good for Woodfin on a data basis and not a feelings basis. And I'm sorry for my strong words. I like you all. But that's how I feel. Thank you. That's how we feel too. <laughs> Thank you. Mike Maloney. I was here at the last meeting. What do you say, Amy? Mike Maloney. Thank you. I own a vacation rental, and my retirement income comes from that uh, vacation rental. I purchased uh, the rental, got the permit from you. Uh, at the time, you said it was um, it was a permanent use permit. So now um, I'm hearing that you're going to take away my retirement. I have the permit and authorized from the town of Woodfin to own this STR. I spent most of my retirement once I got the permit from you before I even purchased the property. My realtor friend here helped me with that. Um, 
it, I wanted to make sure it was legal. So I did all the right things. I did everything you wanted. I spent as additional information to add additional parking. So everything that you have here on the list, I have done. I have insurance, I have the parking, I have the permits, uh, I have, I prohibit special, uh, special um, parties or anything like that. I abide by, um, we, have a good, we have a great neighborhood, here's my neighbor right here. Uh, we added value to our neighborhood, beautified our neighborhood. We started a neighborhood watch and with the help working with the Woodfin Police Department, our neighborhood got out drug uh, sellers that were in our neighborhood. Quite a, a, a few of them that were in our neighborhood. Um, so we, turn, we are concerned this is our neighbor, this neighborhood, this is our community. Please listen to us. You know, um, I, we added value to the neighborhood and it's increased all the value of our houses and now that the drug dealers are gone, it's even better. Um, you, I mentioned I wanted facts from Shannon regarding the closing of these STRs, going from what used to be a permanent to a limited now and what was the justification. I have a whole list of justifications here. Um, noise. Um, I want to know, we would like to know how many noise problems there are. How about drinking and partying? Sounds like it's a big problem. Uh, unattended uh, fires outside, outdoor fires. Um, inadequate septic tank use. Let's hear from the city of Woodfin uh, Water Department to find out what's, how many of those septic problems and who they're influencing. We heard from these people about the big development that it's going to affect their property and I can understand that. But what are we doing to hurt the society? I mean, our community. What are we doing? We're just small people. We don't have big money for attorneys to fight this. Well, here's some of the facts. I have six days, six stays, rental stays per month from tourists. Times that by 12, that's 72 stays a year that people visiting. Time. Let me just finish this. I have to call it out of equity, and I apologize. I know. I, I apologize. I would like to come back. This is, I have one minute. Get one someone minute. else to give you their time, and you can come back. Yes. <laughs> okay. Six days per month. Time well, and he has to wait your turn okay. till your turn. Just remember where you are. Okay. Um, whew, am I on the right? Uh... Ariel, Ariel Haas. Okay, sorry, I'm lost. So, um, help me out here. Okay. Oh, got it. I, yep, got it. Okay, forgive me. Beautiful handwriting. T A N E? Okay. Tara, yeah, thank you. Tara Granke. I'm a local resident. I've never been to a town hall meeting before, so this is exciting for me. Um, my husband and I own a short-term rental here in, in Woodfin. We're local. We have a four-year-old and a one-year-old, and we bought this property with my sister. And it was, you know, we split the money. Like, it is our way to pay for preschool to save money, just to echo some similar things that other folks have said. It is really just a huge benefit to our family. Um, we really depend on the income. It, my husband owns a small business here in Asheville, and we work really hard. And this is, you know, something that we just depend on every month. And without it, we would have to make some changes to um, what we're able to provide for our kids and what we do at home. Um, additionally, we employ our neighbors just down the road um, here in Woodfin to be our landscapers. We have a father-son um, company that comes out and do does our landscaping. And our cleaner is also a single mom who quit her job to take care of her mother who has dementia so that she didn't have a nine to five job anymore so that she could clean houses. And I know she does at least three other properties in Woodfin that are residentially zoned right in the same area. So just with our one little house, 
that is going to ripple out and affect at least three families. So um, we really hope that you all will stay favorable to short-term rentals and residential areas. Thank you. Gary Stanton. My name is Gary Stanton. And i just like to say that I think that Woodfin is doing a lot of really progressive, admirable things to attract tourism to this town. And uh, there's so much of this beautiful area that we get to the privilege of living in. But we're adding in the continuous wave in the French Broad River. We've got the greenway that we're putting in. And these are all incredible things to attract tourism, as well as the enjoyment of the residents of this area. And when we contemplate <coughs> restricting short-term rentals, what we're doing is we're not allowing occupancy for tourists to come in here and enjoy these things that we're putting into the community. We're spending millions of dollars to put these things into our community to make it even more attractive than it is. And yet we're not allowing people to have a place to stay to come and enjoy it. And if they do stay somewhere else, which just as was said, the very first person, Ariel, I think his name was, he talked about if they do come to the community, they're going to stay somewhere else and they're going to spend their money somewhere else. And there is a ripple effect of outside money coming into a community. And uh, it was talked about, I think, by Mr. Moultrie here. So whatever time I got left, I want to give it to Mr. Moultrie to finish what he was talking about. Thanks very much. Come on. He's giving you time. Okay, great. So, <laughs> <we're at war. laughs> we had 12 people that were signed to that committee. Jerry, the mayor, is his committee. He chairs it. We voted 11 to 1 on the proposal. I know that vote because I was the one that voted against it, believe it or not. I stand up here for you. I want to be a short-term rental, but I voted against the proposal. I don't have time to go into why, but it's a good reason. At any rate, we came up with the land use recommendations, which went into effect on July 1st, 2016. That's the date. And I verified, so I got all the stuff in there. In that, we talk about if a homeowner's, you know, you can have it in residential areas. We talked about where you can have it in residential areas. We talked about a homeowner's association outside of that area you could have a 75% vote and they could have it in their areas. So we had it all defined here. We talked about the permits. All this was in here. And the reason why this is so important is that we made decisions, we made investments, we made millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars collectively here based on what was approved and what the city said we could do. Here's a permit that I was given. I was given this permit, I brought it down here after we got this all approved and filed for a permit. I did not get one. So I come back down here again. I came down here three times to ask for my permit to be approved and I was told at that time there was a lawsuit pending and Woodfriends decided not to implement what we had decided to do, right? So now I found out I don't have a permit. The minutes from the meetings, I don't know what's happened, but they're not archived. Some of the most important agenda meetings of the town of Woodfin, the Board of Aldermans, if you look at this, they're missing. Hey, you're going to come back. To be continued. I will build my case. <laughs> if anybody else wants to give me another minute, I'll appreciate it. <laughs> Cliff hangers. This is how communities right, work we'll together. To we'll get to the end. Go ahead. Somebody else come up. This is a great example of communities working together. Okay. Uh, Jeff and Mary Rich Wagen Wager Wagen. Not sure, and I apologize. Okay. Mary Freeman. Okay. Larry Hamilton. Terry starts with an H. Susan Hassel. Car Carol Saltzman. Look at this. Joe Kassane. Ooh, it's beautiful writing. Wayne and Ingrid DeCastri. Michelle Wires. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, take my mask off. Yeah, my name is Michelle Wires. I've been a Woodfin resident for eight years. 
My mother and I created a tiny house short-term rental here in Woodfin um, a few years ago. That was to support my continued residency here as well as her early retirement due to illness. Um, I pride myself on the care we take to ensure um, with any concerns with our short-term rental being addressed immediately. We've never once had a neighbor complain. Um, however, all of our neighbors do have our contact information if anything were to arise. Um, we have our Woodfin permit on file. We have proper insurance coverage. Um, we have sufficient parking. So we're meeting all of those um, potential requirements should you um, create a good neighbor policy. Um, we set expectations and rules for our guests up front. So that would be anything from no events on our property to quiet hours to no pets um, to you know letting them know where the parking areas are. Um, I am urging the board to create um, a good neighbor policy which would enact some of those things that I just discussed. Um, this is one, I'm going to hand this off to you Shannon if that's okay. Um, this was created by Rent Responsibly, they're an awesome um, nonprofit organization that works with um, you know communities that are looking to put restrictions on short-term rentals and um, creating fairness for all. So um, I urge you to take a look at that if you get a chance. Uh, I absolutely understand and empathize with the need for affordable housing in our community. Um, I also do not wish to see large investment conglomerates buying up um, massive amounts of housing here um, and creating you know, a detriment to our local residents. So I would love to continue to explore ways to increase affordable housing in our community. Uh, one idea would be to have short-term rentals more directly supporting our community um, by taking permitted Airbnbs and creating potentially like a Woodfin um, nonprofit. So on Airbnb, if you're unfamiliar, you can set up a donation to a nonprofit, um, and that would be a certain percentage of your income. So I know we discussed last meeting about us not being able to have access to those occupancy taxes because they're held at a state level. I'm just trying to think outside of the box on how we can still have monetary contributions to our community from short-term rentals. Um, that would be a very simple, to my knowledge, it shows as a badge on your listing. So it's very easy to look through and make sure that those listings are you know, contributing to the fund. You know, those funds could go to support parks, schools, affordable housing in the town. Um, I did want to speak on short-term rentals, creating a neighborhood feel. Um, I know some of my guests have gone to dinner with the neighbors on my vacation rental. Um, I know other guests who have had coffee on the patio with them. So I wouldn't say that these guests are, you know, staying separate from the communities that they're staying in. They are, you know, enjoying time with the community as well. I do agree that some changes need to be made to address some of the community members' concerns surrounding short-term rentals. I am concerned by the potential amortization of existing short-term rentals, so I urge you to time into that. No. I may get this wrong. Renew Hensley? Renew? Hi, I am Rainu Hensley. I have been a homeowner in Woodfin since 2006 and um, own a four bedroom home. When I was looking at the packet, I was looking at the short term rental and it said short term rentals would be, if it was defined as the packet said, three bedrooms or less. When, um, I'm unsure when you were speaking, you talked about five and six bedrooms homes being considered ends. Um, so I feel like four bedrooms are kind of um, left out there if that was a consideration. We, um, we are a family of eight, so uh, we have six children and two adults. When we travel, we require that amount of space. So the ability to get a hotel room is not possible. One, it would be far too expensive, but also we have small children that we can't leave unsupervised in a hotel room. Um, I was really surprised we changed ownership, we changed um, management of our short term rental to ourselves in January, and I came up to um, to change that on our permit and found out our permit did not exist. It was not on 
record. They couldn't find the permit, but then I was told, well, we'll call you if there is a problem. So fast forward to me going down the road last month when you guys met, I hear on the radio that Woodfin is considering a change to short-term rentals. It was very much a surprise. Um, no idea that that was happening. Um, as well as the packet, I feel like today's the first day that I saw the packet and I understand there was a work session earlier today. So as a homeowner, I feel like I haven't been very well informed of the process and what's happening, that I, I was suddenly surprised with that. Um, as others have spoken, I'm a school counselor. I serve our community. My husband is a firefighter who also serves our community. He works in the county where he does not have state retirement. It is a part of his retirement um, that we do short-term rental. We also follow every guideline we have, um, we have which I refiled for our permit. Um, the reason I absolutely know we did that is because it wasn't online. I had to come get it. Then I had to come drop it off. Um, so it would affect our family financially. But as I said, we, we have those guidelines. We have parking. Time. Mm -hmm. Eric, beautiful handwriting starts with a T. <laughs> Some of the facts regarding uh, vacation rentals, I haven't heard any facts from the board why we shouldn't. Every, I have seen no numbers from the board telling us why we shouldn't. Uh, I can understand, like I said, big companies from out of state, but we live here. Six days per month, 12 months, that's 72 stays on average in this area for short-term rentals. If you take, you told me there was 300 rentals, but only a few permitted. Well, I'm one of the permitted ones, and it's stamped, and it's all good. I did everything, and I bought a property based on the board, based on, I did that, all the right things. Okay, so 300, uh, you said there were three, about 300 STRs in the area, a lot of them unpermanent, they, that, you should go after them, yes. <laughs> uh, 72 stays, that's 21,600 stays we have in the Woodfin. 21,600 rental overnight stays in the city of Asheville. I mean, uh, Woodfin. Um, we average about three visitors per stay. If you add three, three visitors per stay times 21,600, that's 64,800 visitors, tourists visiting Woodfin. 64,800, based on the 300 as, uh, uh, rental properties, 64,800 Woodfin tourists each year visiting Woodfin. I know businesses in Woodfin that depend on my, my home stays for them to, to increase their business. Breweries right down on the river there, they all depend on that. And I recommend each business to every person who stays and they use that business. If you get rid of this, it's gonna be a lot more than just affecting my retirement for the rest of my life. It's gonna be affecting the cleaners, the maintenance people and everything, their livelihood. And it's gonna affect your small businesses. Who wants a small business in this town if you're cutting down and there's no hotels here, there's no place for families, like we were saying, for large families to stay? You can't stay in an expensive hotel in, in Asheville with a family of five or six. We are providing a service for this community and I'm asking you to please grandfather in those that did the right thing, like I did get a permit from you guys. I did everything that I did, what uh, you said was I should have done correctly. And I just, I just, I, five years of phasing me out, or under five years to phasing me out, is phasing me out of my retirement. Is there time left? Is there how much time left? Oh, Eric, did you want to say something in 30 seconds? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I'm a manager, and I've, I've helped a few people in here set up their Airbnbs. Um, they're all people. You know, they're teachers, they're realtors, they're... Uh, 
Um, you know, they work around Asheville. They're all they're all people. You know, they're not big companies. Um, they invested in these properties to because it's getting harder. It's a tough economy, um, and people are driving Uber. <laughs> they're doing Toro. They're doing um, uh, Instacart, and they're doing Airbnbs. And it's not big business. They're doing it so they can provide for their families and uh, try to get an edge on this this evolving economy where it's hard. People are working two and three jobs. It's time. It's time. Okay, thank you. Eric, thank you for your generosity. So, Nicholas, step right up. Is it Venez? Oh, not today. Amanda Dart. Look at this. David Peterson. LT. Last name, a mystery. Stephen Gabriel. Yes. It's been my first time at any. Um, so I didn't really know what I was signing. Uh, I thought it was just a check in. So uh, <laughs> that's fine. Right. You can take my time and whatever's over, you can take well, whatever. Okay. Um, there you well, go. I'm going to wrap mine up here because I'm going to be up and down. <laughs> Let me just say that the reason why I'm here is because I'm going to wrap mine up here because I'm going to be up and down. Let me just say that there was a, I think you guys know that in the Wilmington lawsuit case, the town had to, you guys are very aware of that, where they tried to enforce zoning ordinance through a permit process and they were found to be in violation of the law and the courts have upheld that and they're not going to appeal this case they're having to pay three hundred thousand dollars and the Shannon I know you you're probably on top of that more than I am and of course you guys are aware of the, the Senate bill that was passed last year that really restricts town's ability to do certain things to enforce me in a residential area of any type of zoning on how, me being able to rent my property so I'm sure you guys are aware of that and you got a legal opinion on how you're going to proceed on that but the bottom line is, let me just wrap it up and say the following. We are not Asheville. Woodfield was created to be not away from Asheville. Matter of fact, we didn't want to be swallowed by Asheville. That's why we were created. That's right. We don't want to be like Asheville, and we don't want to act like Asheville. We are our own little community, and we have weird ways we do stuff. <laughs> I call that's it right. a made by RFD approach. And I, I appreciate the three minutes, but you know, that's the first time I've ever been. Usually you come here and you talk and everybody talks and everybody talks and gets done. It's, it's different. And I like that about Woodford. And we need to take that into consideration. These are just people just trying to get by. And we need to figure out some way. That's why we had the committee way back then, seven years ago, to find a way that we could work together and, and still be in compliant. And that's all we're asking. And matter of fact, is anybody in here against short term rental? I just this community that you all are voters or whatever is it but is anybody how many is a fourth short term no. in here okay i uh, rest my case thank you thank you eric did you want to take the remaining time <laughs> okay. listen this is cooperating yeah, right here but um yeah so uh i just i really liked what he said about a task force to look into the economic impact um, and I just want to reiterate um, these are people um, you know I taught people that were friends or co-workers or neighbors how to do this because they were having a hard time being able to provide you know one of my clients um, upgraded and got a bigger house for his growing family uh, one set up retirement uh, one's a teacher or counselor so um, they're, they're just normal people and they're, they're trying to survive in an in evolving economy. And I would just implore you to, I get that the town's moving in another direction, but these people did it right. And I think in, in fairness, it would be, um, if, if you could consider allowing them to continue what they've done responsibly and had permits, maybe look into um, those who aren't doing <laughs> permits and what are we doing to regulate that and what have, what have we done to curtail the existing um, uh, units that aren't conforming so um, that's it Matt Allen hi good evening 
Uh, Matt Allen, I work at Land of the Sky Association of Realtors. We cover Transylvania, Buncombe, and Madison County. We have 2,200 members. And also the realtors helped create STR Trust, a short-term rental alliance last November. Uh, it's the realtors and then a, just various people who either own STRs or do property management, cleaners, plumbers, you name it. If they have an interest in STRs, they're a member of our organization. Um, you know, I, I made it known last meeting how strongly we feel that especially the amortization piece just really really bad private property rights the reasonable expectation of these people when they purchase their properties um, so you, you you heard my spiel last time but I wanted to actually use most of my time to read a letter from someone who owns an STR here but couldn't be here tonight uh, she was here at the last meeting so I'm gonna quickly do that my name is Sydney Battersby. I have been a Woodfin resident and property owner for the past four months. I currently split my time between Asheville and Salt Lake City, Utah. Woodfin is where I call home. When I am working here, I choose to purchase my prop. I chose to purchase my property in Woodfin for the flexibility to be able to utilize it as a short-term rental when I'm not in town. It has always been important to me to be a good neighbor from the beginning, and I've made sure that I have the proper permit with the city, proper insurance, house rule restrictions, uh, and house rule restrictions to maintain that status. Since I started hosting this year, my short term rental has welcomed guests from across North Carolina. I welcome individuals working from home, guests who contribute to tourism economy by coming to explore beautiful hiking trails and artistry that our area has to offer, and individuals coming to visit family. My rental has enabled me to offset some of the costs of living between two states, as well as promoting a way for savings. I pay all of my STR and property taxes, and as a local realtor, I send my guests to support local businesses. Um, as a local realtor, I'm a firm believer in affordable housing. I'm a vigorous proponent against large corporations and rental groups coming in and purchasing several homes in order to turn a profit. I believe there are many facets to the housing crisis and would love to have an open dialogue with town officials about how we can um, affect how we can address housing affordability and availability. I implore you to take time to hear our stories, of, hear the stories of local community of STR owners. I believe that you'll find that we are mainly local individuals trying to build a better life for ourselves, our families, and our children. Um, I'm committed to continuing an open dialogue with the city of Woodfin and community members about local STRs. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Okay, so that's Sydney. Um, I felt obliged to read that on her behalf since she can't be here. Um, let me just say in closing, I, you know, again, I like I said last time, love the idea of a task force. I had no idea that there's some historical uh, precedent for that. That's pretty cool. I think it's a great idea. It's what Brevard's doing, very intentional about adopting restrictions. And time. thank you all very much. <laughs> Okay, so for forgive me, James, Jamie, Jamu, Hosky, one of those maybe. Okay, how about Alex, Alex Bernstein? Thank you. Hi there, I'm Alex Bernstein. I live at 36 Beaver Rec Road, right next to Woodfin, but unincorporated Buncombe County, and. My wife and I own a business in Woodfin for about 15 years. We also own a rental property. I was born and raised in these mountains and have lived in and out of Woodfin for, since I went to UNCA for probably at least 35 years. You can do the math, I just turned 50. I think this is an outstanding proposal and I commend Shannon and staff for putting this forward. To me, it's a compromise. It's not saying you can't do short-term rental but it's allowing it in some places. So I fully support that and I hope the board approves what's proposed. Personal note, I live right next to a Airbnb and it was a nightmare. They, it was very close. The fire alarm would go off almost every single weekend. They would park in our handicapped spot that we use for our son almost every weekend. I literally almost killed a person who was drunk vomiting <coughs> in our driveway, literally slammed on the brakes. There was people managing, I know I don't mean to be dramatic, but it does need to be monitored. And that's all they're asking. My son, again, talking about him, and I know this was already said before, so I don't mean to rob somebody else's thunder, but Woodfin is where community matters. I was taking my son to school, he read the sign without me even saying, he said, Woodfin, community matters. 
it's hard to build a community if you have people coming in and out every weekend. Charlotte, Charleston, Virginia, how do you build a community? My wife and I recently bought a house in Woodfin as an investment. We have a long-term rental there and we're able to pay for the house and it's somebody that actually moved in and wanted to live in Woodfin and work in Woodfin, pay taxes in Woodfin and be part of Woodfin community. She uses the park that you guys just built down the street, which I applaud that, it's awesome. How are people gonna live in this community of Woodfin if there's nothing but speculative real estate people trying to buy? Well, no, I'm just saying that th this is a compromise. How are people- Can you address, can you address us? Okay. Yeah, thank you. I just, I again live here and work here and I think there's a problem with people that actually want to live in Woodfin and work in Woodfin because people are buying up houses nonstop. I watch the real estate market every day I look at stuff and I think a big part of it is fed by speculative buying. People are buying houses for investment and they're not buying until they live. You have the right to do it, that's fine. Just, we're just looking, or I think the town's proposing just a way to manage it and I think that's a great idea. Again, I lived right next to it, it was a nightmare. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Br Brian, B Brian Burton. Yeah, does anyone need time? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Brian, <laughs> such a great community member. <laughs> Can we give a round of applause for Brian? <laughs> Giving time away. <laughs> well, I, I, I gotta say there's a lot of assumptions being made. I'm sorry, you've had a really bad uh, experience. We have never had a complaint, a uh, poor fridge. We've never had a complaint. We've lived here since 2006. We've been in Asheville area since 2000. We are permanent residents. Will you address us? Yes. Yeah. So like that is a little offensive to me that he just assumes that everybody that's that's here and has been here for years doing this to help their lives GPS along is Sigma doing lost. it just because of an investment. Like we just decided to do it because we had some extra money and we put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into that building and have somebody uh, malign us because they've had a bad experience where they are. You should be reporting them to the police and having them come and oh, report it. Okay. Report okay. Here, <laughs> so like that, you know, uh, just saying like it's not it's not that simple. It's just not that simple. You know, it's not that simple. Thank you. Okay, so we have, oh, do you want, do you want to speak? Okay, so we have one more person on the list. Um, Lily Mothellis. Okay, so I'm going to close public comment. It's 8.11 p.m. And uh, come back to discussion between the two committee members that are at, at the table that can vote. Uh, <clears throat> Jeff, I have some changes to the ordinance uh, being suggested that I would like to propose. Okay. Um, on the list of, um, on, the, on the first page where it gets down to whereas the Woodfin Board of Commissioners, that, the last whereas, they list three things that um, the development code text amendment is consistent with the comprehensive plan in the following ways. And that lists three things. I want to add a fourth that says increase the supply of affordable owner-occupied housing to meet the needs of prospective residents with lower income levels. It occurs to me, this is directly from the comprehensive um, plan. Um, I almost wonder if that shouldn't even be amended to say um, owner, owner or long-term rental occupied. Just because I really, uh, can we, Shannon, could we change it even though the comprehensive plan doesn't have owner uh, rental, long-term rental? Well, we're in the process of updating our entire comprehensive plan. Okay. So, well, anyhow, I would add that uh, as number four. Um, I, uh, uh, Shannon, um, the word special events, you clarified for me in an email a, a def definition of that. Is that somewhere that can be used uh, as an, uh, you know, to further define what special events are? I think what you want to do is recommend that we add a definition for 
Okay, all right. I recommend that and what you, um, yes, that's what I recommend. And I want to say that, um, you know, some of the comments tonight really have um, uh, influenced me somewhat, but most of you know I'm, I'm a person who wants to see neighborhoods strengthened in this area and that I do not believe um, that the current STR situation is doing that. I, I think, um, you know, I, I, I've, because this group was present last time and probably some of you were at the June meeting too, uh, by the way, at the June meeting, when we really advertised that we were going to discuss short-term rentals, you know, 12 people spoke against it, six people spoke for it. So if you really open it up to the general public, and, uh, you know, there are a lot of people living on streets in R7 and R10 where the STRs dominate the streets. I don't, I don't know the location of yours, but they, they almost don't have any neighbors to relate to. Um, so it, it really is a challenging situation for our community if we want to strengthen neighborhoods. Maybe I'm not supposed to talk to the audience. Is that true? <laughs> I'm not supposed to? You can speak as a board member. Okay. Okay, I'm speaking to the board. Um, Define um, the, the other, the thing I want to talk about a little is the five-year thing because when I came in here tonight, you know, I was really fa in favor of a lower amortization. But it occurred to me that, you know, if you said five years, you should put in it, if sold, cannot continue as an STR. So if any of you chose to sell your property, you can't do that? You can't do that. Okay. Well, then I think maybe there should be some thought to, uh, you know, residents who live, you know, close to your STRs and you are following all the rules and the street isn't dominated by STRs, that an extension could be considered after the time period of amortization, whether it's five or even less. I, I, but we do have a problem here with people investing and buying up Wadefin properties. I, I worked with a guy at a polling place once who told me he and his wife were just looking to buy properties in Wadefin because they knew, they knew they could, huh? I agree with you fully. Okay, it's, it's a problem and, and we've got to stop that because that's what's taking all the housing out of the market. So people. Okay, order please. Well, anyhow. Um, Do common sense research. Okay, order. No, no, I did, I've, I've read every article I can find. Wow. Member, member over the order. <laughs> and I just, I just want to say this, you guys, we're doing so well, and I know this is a passionate topic. I promise you, I know. But we're making a decision on our livelihood. No, this, we're not making a decision. <laughs> <laughs> Don't engage. So I'm sorry, but you cannot speak quiet. out of turn. Public comment is closed. If you can't follow these rules, we're going to ask you to leave. Okay? I'll be quiet. Thank you. Um, anyhow, I, I, I... Linda, will you address us, and then it might be a okay, little easier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, Jeff, where do you stand on this? Um, I also agree with a strong neighborhood. Totally, 100%. But I also understand what it's like to have to work two or three jobs. I've done it myself. I've worked three fire departments at the same time. So I can understand. And my comment about this is not the Woodson that I used to live in, all houses had families in them. That's all I was saying. There's no data that you can find that will show you that. But I appreciate your comments as well. So. Whiffin was a smaller town when I was growing up. It stopped out here at Hillcrest on Weaverville Highway. But every house had a family and you knew who that family was. And I understand where you're coming from. Um, I also understand that there needs to be restrictions. So um, I don't think it's right to totally get away with it. I understand the gentleman up here, what he were talking about. I was on the zoning board at that time when that happened. So um, that's always going to be a, a topic. I'm, I'm kind of in the fence. I think it's something that something needs to be worked on with a task force. 
I also agree with your comments that Woodfin was established. We don't need to look at other municipalities in what we do. This is Woodfin, not Asheville, not Weirville, or Black Mountain. We decide what we do on our own. But the only thing I would say is that if you want research, the re there's no research in Woodfin. There's research on the county and, and the city of Asheville. There's an article in the blade. Some of you may not read it. And uh, October 18th, if you really want to see a description of Airbnbs in the area, you really should read it. <laughs> but anyhow, okay. Um, Can I finish? I, oh, sure. I'm sorry. Thank you. You can look at Asheville, but you can't compare the two. You can't compare Woodfin to Asheville because of the way how, how big it is and how little Woodfin is. That's, that's all I'm saying. And I know things have changed, and um, of course there's a whole new people in charge here. The town spoke, that's what they wanted, but we don't have to follow what they, they do. We've got people here like our town, our town manager now. She's smart. We've got people here that can do things for us. So that's just all I'm saying about that. So um, that's just where I stand right now. I understand y'all are totally 100%, but also know there needs to be some restrictions, but also need, also knows that it does not need to be totally kicked out or one neighborhood needs to be picked on, ate up with uh, short-term rentals. So. The, the other issue that I would raise is enforcement, and I think that there needs to be, uh, going forward, and, and again, this, we're not talking about you guys in the near future, but we really have problems here, you know, because there isn't any enforcement. So I think the commission, uh, the town commission needs to be told they need um, to put up more funds in order to ensure that there is enforcement. Because right now we have all kinds of illegal STRs all over this town. I'm not talking about you guys. You're not illegal. Okay, but there are lots, and, and we don't have the ability to even enforce. And, and they're in the newer neighborhoods. <laughs> so, um, so, Jeff, I think the challenge is, though, we're supposed to, you and I are supposed to vote on this, this ordinance. Right. So, have you made a decision? I've, I've suggested some modifications. Are, are you voting for against or I'm voting against at this time so Shannon how do you or, or attorney whoever was or, or <laughs> maybe you're not chair, right? <laughs> well I didn't I didn't I didn't uh. <laughs> Procedurally, the reason that this comes to the planning board is that um, Chapter 160D requires before any amendment to a zoning, any zoning ordinance, uh, that the planning board review and make a recommendation on it. Um, that goes back to the, the what we're calling the town council, right, which I right, think right. is officially the name of them, um, for for final consideration. And so they um, have requested and I know that in um, uh, in Shannon's uh, agenda packet she mentioned that um, they're have they've had discussion about further input before action but they want to move it back to the council level for consideration final decision yes okay so anything we do tonight doesn't affect that it'll still go forward it's not binding it doesn't become law when you vote on it it's a recommendation of one way or the other they still to, have their own way the of making up their own mind and voting yes or yes. no self yes sir it's not binding you're an advisory board to, to can, can my uh, suggested revisions go forward with it or, or because it, yeah, we can, yes we can also copy of the So the only other thing I would offer is that another option is, uh, and Jeff, I don't, I don't know if this is possible or not, but is if there's some version of the ordinance that would be acceptable to both, um, then you could move that recommended ordinance or that version. Okay. To Jeff, where do you stand? So for instance, if you did not support amortization, but you supported everything else, we could 
the first the first that you talked about that's where it's like five years it kind of I'm not for that but I am for some some form of uh, restrictions on that on it, that even if an extension were allowed for the people who lived up to their obligation in the, in R7 and R10? I think the extension that you described is, is legally problematic. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I think it's, at least as far as the amortization goes, it may be an all or nothing kind of... Well, can, can we have the thing of, oh, you said you can't, if it can't be sold as an STR after it... it that is also... Also, on, okay. Because um, your permit runs with the land. It doesn't... It's so confusing. It took me a long time to understand, but public comment is closed. So, just it's. So, we, we heard from quite a few people who didn't have an issue with the other rules that we're proposing or the additional restrictions. I think the greatest amount of heartburn is for the amortization of the people who are lawfully established. So, um, th that might be a version of the ordinance that could be more. So. And and we could still deal with enforcement in the areas where they're all illegal. Uh, yeah, that, well, that would be a recommendation, a separate recommendation. Are you comfortable with that, Jeff? Yeah, I believe what she said. Though she's got the experience that she come from, it's going to be hard to do the enforcement itself, right? So I, I think it's going to be hard, but there are ways. Okay. I mean, it okay. Costs money, and it becomes a fiscal. I don't want to overtax anybody with something like that as well. So it kind of depends on how big of a priority. Yeah. And the, the recommendation or the information in the staff report that goes to the council can, can explain that there was some difference of opinion about the, there was some split when it comes to amortization. So we can give them that context. And if they feel strongly about it, they want to put it back in, they can, or they may choose to just leave it out. But they can also, um, they can also create a motion that just goes to council that they both agree upon. It doesn't have to be a 50-50. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so, I, yeah. so, so in my like opinion, I, as chair only, <laughs> it might be um, advantageous to continue talking about what you want removed and what might need to stay in a lean format to pr get back to the town administrator to take to council. So an example of a, an appropriate motion would be, I move that we recommend the short-term rental regulation as Minus. proposed with the exception that we do not recommend adoption of uh, the amortization. amortization. Okay, Jeff, that's your motion. Make it. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm too, if you'll say it, I'll second it for sure. <laughs> um, we have a, I think we have a. I didn't, I don't, this is all I got. I didn't get the, any of that stuff. I, I don't think I have everything yeah. either. I've been trying to find the email and couldn't find the email on that. So, <laughs> but and what about the addition of the affordable housing thing that I put in there? Let's Can you live with that? Change. Why don't you write up Let's the piece that? <clears throat> I I wanted to add number four to those three oh, points. Oh. I so. <laughs> Thank you. So I just want to ask as a point of order is now the time for what's what's needed to amend to add it can be anything what's you the needed they, thing they can continue, continue discussion until they've got a version of it that they're happy with recommending uh for consideration by the town council okay thank you um, this it and i'm prompted madam chair and i can't help but remind everybody that that old saying those who love either the law or sausages should see neither being made yeah we've seen a whole lot of sausage getting made tonight so i, <laughs> I appreciate everybody's patience and uh, uh with each other Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I asked all. Shannon to define <laughs> define special events in any version. I well, you know, you know, when people get together like that, they're going to want to have so and so over if they they're coming in from town. These people live here. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So thanks for sticking it out. 
definition for special events, the um, consistency, adding the consistency statement about affordable housing, and is there something else? I'm sorry, I'm not following you, but I'm trying to I'm trying remember. to draft a motion for Jeff. Oh, for Jeff. Okay. Um, so I'm saying proposed text amendment with the condition that one, the provision for affordable housing be removed. Excuse me, amortization be removed, um, and that the definition for special event be added. Was there any other conditions? And then I'm going to add consistency. Yeah, you, did you put in number four, the increased supply of affordable owner-occupied housing? No. I don't know if we're understanding where that goes. I, it's, it's part of, it's of those four, yeah. I'll read everything that's written down. <laughs> been typed. Sorry. I'm, no, you're I'm fine. Sorry, my handwriting is. Uh, it's probably a lot better than mine. Okay. So, okay. And then I'll try to say that word. <laughs> so insert it here and then come back to you. Okay. The rest. Okay. Sounds good. I hope. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. I don't know if I am or not. Y'all please bear with me. <laughs> Having reviewed the text amendments of the Town of Woodfin Code of Ordinance for Amendments to Short Term Rentals, Chapter 30, and Zoning, Chapter 54, Ordinance, and having considered information from the planning staff of the town of Woodfin along with the comments from other persons pursuant to 160D-604D, the town of Woodfin planning board hereby adopts the following motion effective November 1st, 2022. The town of Woodfin planning board finds the proposed text amendment with the condition that the amortization is removed, be removed uh, is in the public interest to oh, consider. Uh, and, and a definition for special events uh, is in the public interest is cons consistent with the town of Woodfin comprehensive plan and meets the development needs of the community in that the request provides additional one to one provides additional clarity and predictability to pre develop development requirements thereby supporting economic development enhances standards for community capabilities and harmony between land uses and concentrates higher impact uses in suitable areas, advances public health, safety, and welfare by preserving quality of life in residential neighborhoods and minimizing opportunities for nuisance issues and other land uses conflicts. Number four, increases the supply of affordable housing. Oh, I second it. <laughs> It'd be real odd if needed one of us. Motion. Well, I mean, the motion to second. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. all in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. So, what am I missing? Yeah. We have to adjourn. Okay. So, before I adjourn, I want to thank. Do, will you give me will you give me a minute to so I can thank you my brain doesn't work in two places so um, I want to thank everyone for coming out to me um, everyone appears a volunteer and, and we're just citizens and community members and you showed yourself tonight to be exactly the community members and citizens of Woodfin. Strong, opinionated, hardworking, and helping each other when there wasn't enough time for other people. And with that, I thank you as your vice chair and have a wonderful night. We're adjourned. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Walmart. Right. I'm sorry. Oh, back there.
I mean, it's that was, yeah, you know, moving on the bottom of the property. Yeah, 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 uh, oh, wow. Thank you so much for your service. Yeah. Uh, 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 what tool you use for we have for what that so it's not as now we don't recommend anyone in the future being a I'm a strong, I have a very strong feeling damaging and I think we're going to be able to on our street. But we live on Reese Street. It's like right here. Right there, yeah. We live right there at Reese Street down there. There's no neighbors around here. Yeah, right on the right. Yeah. It took us three years to build that place out. It took us three years to build that place out. It took us three years to build that place out. It took us three years to build that place out. I'm gonna go give it to Marie. Uh, All right. Thank you. I appreciate your stance. Thank you very much. I, I, we love it. It filled us like before all this. We were like clearing like forty, maybe fifty thousand dollars in your top between the two of us. And now we're was in the 70s, so like, it's a big difference. So we work real hard. We know what that's like. We want to have some time with our kids. I said we want to have some time with our kids. I'm sorry. I got a house in 5-8. I don't like your house. It's too far away from everybody else. Anyway, yeah, look into that. There's about 100 acres up there, and that's the Harvey Park, Nashville. And basically, the pressure for closing, we've got to collect these.